Okay, this is 12.2 negative exponents. Let's recall what we know about exponents. 3 to the third power, that would be 3 times itself 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. 3 squared, 3 times 3, that would be 9. And then remember our power of 1 rule. That just means it's going to be itself. 3 to the 1 power would just be 3. And then remember anything to the 0 power is 1. So 3 to the 0 power would be 1. So what does the expression 3 to the negative 1 mean? Well, negative exponents don't make sense, so we have to change any negative exponent that we see into a positive exponent by taking the reciprocal of the base. So basically, we just flip it. So if we see 3 to the negative 1 power, that really means 1 third to the positive 1 power. So we just flip it. Okay, so if I have 3 to the negative 2 power, I can flip or take the reciprocal of my base, and that's 1 third squared. Okay, then I can simplify that. If I square each part, 1 squared is 1, and 3 squared is 9. Okay, so now if I have 1 third to the negative 2 power to make that exponent positive, I'm going to flip my base. If I flip 1 third, I get 3. So that would be 3 squared which is 9. Now, flipping our, our bases only change our exponents from negative to positive. It doesn't change the base. So this is a negative 3 to the negative 2 power. We want to get rid of that negative exponent. So I'm going to flip my base, and it's still negative, but now it's a 1 third, and that makes it to the positive 2 power. But if I square a negative one-third, it becomes positive, and it's one-ninth. But that's only because I squared that negative one-third times negative one-third would become a positive one-ninth. Okay, number four. I have a negative one-third to the negative two power. So if I flip this inside, that becomes a positive, I mean, sorry, a negative three. <laughs> and the 2 becomes positive. Now, negative 3 squared is 9. Okay, and then x to the negative 1 half. If I flip x, I get 1 over x squared. All right, and then 1 squared is 1, and x squared is x squared. Now, once we get into having um, several uh, pieces to our quotient. The way that I like to think about it is when I see a negative exponent, whatever its base is, I put it where it's not. So if I have a negative exponent on top to make it positive, I'm going to put it in the bottom. If I have a negative exponent on the bottom, I'm going to bring it to the top. I'm going to put it where it's not. Okay, so this negative x to, I mean, x to the negative 3, I'm going to bring it to the bottom, and that makes it positive. x to the negative 4, I'm going to put it on top, and that makes it positive. Now, once it's positive, I can work with it. So, these need to be combined. Whenever we are simplifying exponents, we need to make sure that we have only one of the same base and no negative exponents in our answer. So since I have two bases that are the same, I need to combine them. So if I combine these, I'm, I'm doing the quotient rule. If I divide like bases, I subtract the exponents, and then I put my exponent, my answer wherever the biggest exponent is. So this would just be x to the 1, um, which is just x. All right, here in number 7, if it is not negative, I leave it alone, leave it where it's at. Okay, so since that x to the third is positive, I'm leaving it where it is. But this x to the negative four, it's in the bottom, I gotta bring it to the top. So once I bring it to the top, it changes the operation from division to multiplication. And now remember the rule, if I'm, my product rule says if I multiply like bases, I add the exponents. So this would give me x to the seventh. 
All right, same thing for number eight. This x to the fourth is positive, so I'll leave it alone, leave it where it's at. And the x to the negative three, I gotta bring it down to the bottom also. Now to show that these things are in the denominator, I need to put a one over it. And then I combine those by multiplying my bases. So I add the exponents and I get a one over x to the seventh. Okay, so in number nine, since this whole thing is being raised to the negative two power, that whole thing needs to be brought to the bottom to make the exponent positive. And again, to show that it's in the bottom, I put a one over it. Okay, and then I just distribute that um, square, and so I get one over four x squared for my answer. Now, number nine had that whole two x in parentheses raised to the negative two power. But in number 10, the two is not being raised to that negative power. So the two stays where it is. If it's not negative, don't move it. But the x is, is raised to a negative power. So I need to move it down to the denominator. And that is my answer. Once we get it simplified, get it down to where there's only one of each variable and there are no negative exponents, then we're done. Okay, number 11, this is combining um, several operations. Okay, so like I said, we can't deal with negative exponents. So that's the first thing we have to get rid of. And I see a negative exponent here and I see a negative exponent here. Well, we can tackle either one of those first. I like to start with the one on the outside. So to make that exponent on the outside positive, I just flip everything inside the parentheses. Don't change any signs, just flip it. Don't change any signs inside the parentheses. Okay, so I have, all of this is gonna go in the bottom. And all of this is gonna go on top. And what that did, when I flipped that, it makes this two positive. Okay, since I still have another negative exponent, I need to make it positive. Everything else stays where it is. Just that one term is gonna move. Okay, so this has to move down to the bottom. So I already have a Y down here. I'm gonna bring down the other Y to the third. Okay, so now I can combine um, terms that are alike. Um, let's see, I'm starting to run out of room. Um, let me write it right here. Okay, so uh, I can combine these x's. Um, these x's. And I can combine these y's. Okay, so for the x's, <clears throat> I use the quotient rule, so I'm going to subtract. And since my biggest exponent is on top, if I subtract 5 from 7, I get x squared on top. The negative 4 stays where it is. And then my y times y to the third, since those are being multiplied, I add the exponents and I get y to the fourth. And remember, all of that is squared. So now I need to distribute the square, so I'm going to use the power rule. Uh, and the power rule says when I raise a power to a power, I multiply. So that's x to the fourth. Remember, I don't apply the power rule to coefficients. Negative 4 squared would become positive 16. 4 times 4 is 16. And then 4... Um, when I use the power rule, 4 times 2, that would be 8. Now, since I don't have any negative exponents and I have only one of each different variable, one x up here and one y down here, I know that I'm done, and that's my answer.